Well, hi everybody. It's 10.30 at night, and there's one thing for certain, the hour of the day or the night has nothing to do with when I want to do a video. I don't have anything in my way. I just say, now I'm going to do a video. So this is the one you get for today. Everybody, I'm sure, is getting ready for Thanksgiving. I'd say you've already been to the grocery. You've bought your turkey. You're getting ready with your uh, cranberry salad, your sweet potato puddings, and all that stuff. Dressing. Naturally, you have the whole works. I've been invited this year to my great niece's house. She's invited several of the family in and... I went last year and each year she puts her Christmas decorations up so that we can all enjoy them for Thanksgiving Day and she does a beautiful job. Um, it, it's such a joy to go to her house. Excuse me. The nose was itching. Okay, let's get back to Thanksgiving. I'm hoping all of you have a very good Thanksgiving. And if you have to travel, be very careful. Uh, take your time getting there and getting back home because we all know how dangerous things can be on the highway. So anyway, my story has nothing to do with Thanksgiving. It's just a story that I've had on my mind and I I wanted to tell it to you because I kind of like it and I'm hoping you'll like it. It seems like most of my stories go back in time. I don't know why everything happened 40 and 50 years ago, but it seemed like they did. This was about 1978. I was working out in the country here in Lexington and uh, my son was getting ready to start school at the University of Kentucky. My daughter was working. My time had come. It was time for me to blossom and do what I wanted to do. So I quit my job. I sold my house. I moved back home and opened a craft shop. Now, I'm not going to say that was the best idea I ever had in my life, because it wasn't. But even so, I was willing to take a chance on it. Because that's what I was good at doing, and I wanted to give it a try. Okay. I'd been in the shop a few months. It was just before Christmas. I was getting all my uh, materials ready and making craft products for my customers. And a couple walked into the shop and I recognized them. The man I had worked with in Lexington. They were very involved in social activities in Lexington. Uh, they were would uh, help with things like bluegrass festivals every summer and things around town, and it just so happened that um, they were building the new Kentucky Horse Park, which was just about a quarter of a mile down the road from where I had been working. Well, we were all excited about that, and we'd been hearing about it day after day. So when the couple came to see me, they said we have an idea and we needed someone like you to help us create this idea. Now, first of all, they said, you know, it's like this. We know that Kentucky is the horse capital of the world. Everybody come to Lexington and Louisville for races. There's the Kentucky Derby, there's Keeneland, there's the Red Mile where they have the uh, trotters and the pacers and then the races at Keeneland. 
So they come from all over the United States for the races and for horse shows. Now, naturally, you're going to have the horse park. You're going to have facilities for uh, events and shops. You've got to have shops. You've got to have those little shops that sell souvenirs. Well, they had an idea for a souvenir. They thought it would go over real well. He said, you know, Tennessee has what they call the Tennessee Road Apple. Now all of you know what that means. I remembered watching Johnny Carson's show one night. And he had this man on from somewhere out west that made jewelry. He made earrings, necklaces, uh, bracelets, keychains, things like that out of bird droppings. Think about that. Well, of course, it was created enough interest with Johnny that he had him on his show, which was a very funny show that night. Not too long ago, I saw a rerun on YouTube of Johnny Carson's show. And that time, back in the 60s and 70s, and he had a man on from Arkansas. And this man also made jewelry. But his jewelry was made from cow chips. You can imagine how that affected Johnny, how he could look into the camera with that blank stare and you just couldn't imagine what he was thinking. So, having said that, my friend said, we thought we would come up with the idea of a souvenir called Kentucky Horse Biscuit. Oh, my goodness gracious. And they wanted my help. Well, now, what could I create that would represent a horse biscuit? I said, well, give me some time to think about it. I'll see what I can do. So, I went to work on it. And... I had to go to uh, Atlanta. They were having a big show in Atlanta. So that's where I had to go to find the materials I needed if I was going to go into business making horse biscuits. When I get back home, I go to a trophy shop. And I told the young man, I said, now I I'm getting ready to make something and it's going to be like a um, little desk set that's going to be a souvenir. And I need a base for this to go on. You know, like the bases you use for uh, displaying a trophy. Well, he showed me a piece of wood. It looked like this. See, like this. Well, this right here is where uh, something's been glued to it. But this, these, this is what I have left of the products I made. This was solid walnut finished, very nice base, just the right size. Then I needed a plate, a little brass plate, identifying what this was. And here was the brass plate. Now, it's not too clean because I've had this a long time. But you see where it says, Kentucky Horse Biscuit. Okay, that's my base. Now, I've got to make a horse biscuit. What am I going to use? What else would you use? I had a customer came in the shop and I was telling her, what I needed, and I said, I don't think I can do this. I said, this 
this is going to have to be done with horse manure. I don't know anybody that's even got any horses. And I've never worked with anything like that. And she said, oh, no problem, no problem. I know exactly where to go. She said, I'll take you there. We'll get you horse manure for you. Now, this sounds really crazy. I know you think it's crazy. You just hear me out. She says, I'll get my husband's big red truck. We'll go up about 15 miles up the road. They have stables there that have the racehorses and their blue ribbon winners. Well, goodness, I'd never heard of such a thing. So she gets a big cardboard box, puts it in the bed of the truck. She gets her husband's shovel, throws it in the bed of the truck. And off we go up the road to the stables. Now, we started through there, and I was shocked. There were big blue ribbon winners on the side of each stable. First place, second place, identifying what they'd won. And those stables were so nice. They were prettier than your own house. I couldn't believe horses were put in there. The floors were beautiful wood. I didn't know anybody that had hardwood floors that looked that good. I was shocked at how well those horses were living and how they were being treated. So she said, come on, the horse manure was out here in the back. Now I wasn't going to touch it. She gets that shovel and she starts shoveling. And I'm going to tell you this. If you've never been around horse manure, wet horse manure stinks to high heaven. I didn't think I was going to be able to breathe. And I thought, no, there's no way I'm going to work with that stuff. I'm not going to put my hands on that stuff. Well, you know, most of it made of hay and uh, whatever. And I just, I couldn't bear the smell. She was getting a big laugh out of it. We come back to my house, and she hauls it out back to behind my garage. She puts it out where it'd get a lot of sun, and the sun would dry out the wet manure. Well, what I learned later, when it dried out, it had no odor, no smell at all. And it was going to be easy to work with. But it was in big chunks, big chunks. You couldn't even break it up. Couldn't break it apart with your hand. And I thought, well, how am I going to turn this stuff into what looked like a horse biscuit? Now, you just use your imagination as to what you think a, a horse biscuit would look like. So, okay, it dries out. Now, in my house, I had a laundry room, nice size laundry room. Had those great big deep sinks like they used to have in restaurants, you know, real deep where you washed your dishes. Perfect, perfect for what I needed. I also had a large bread pan, the kind you would put 24 biscuits on the, on the pan if you were going to bake them. I could use that. So I got my rubber gloves and I got out my blender. Yes, my blender. My blender had been brand new, but it got smoke damage in a house fire. The house fire, that's another story. Okay, I didn't want to get rid of the blender. After all, it was new, even though it did have smoke damage. So it would work for what I needed. I threw in some of the chips of, of the horse biscuit or of the manure, and I ground it up. That worked just fine. I had bought gallons of white glue in Atlanta, 
this is what I was going to have to work with. I was going to have to mix that with the manure and make my horse biscuit. Now, I didn't have a mold. This is what I did used for making horse biscuits. Yes, you did this. Got them into the shape you wanted. Now, naturally, you didn't want them all looking just exactly alike. So they were, they varied in shape a little bit. Most of them about the same size. I put those together and I lined them up on my big bread pan and I let them dry for two or three days. Make sure they were okay. Well, the one thing I wanted to be sure of is that the biscuits wouldn't shed and shed some of the hay that was mixed up in them and uh, make a, a, a mess to where a person wouldn't want to buy it. But they were very firm and held together very well. So I had my wooden base. I had my little brass plate. And then I had these. Now these get glued to the base and they hold ballpoint pens. Here's what I came up with. Now this is not the pen that belongs in there because I couldn't find the old pens. I just stuck this one in here so you could see what it looked like. Can you see? Okay, there's my horse biscuit. How does that look? All right, that was the finished product. I also had one that's what you call for the man desk, office desk. Then I had one that I made that was just a small plaque. I cut out little horses, glued them on, painted the plaques, and here's another horse biscuit. Well, this one looks a little lopsided, but anyway, it's one I had left over. And here's another one with a different color horse. So there's what I had for just the little gift souvenir. Somebody won't say this is from my trip to Kentucky, to the Kentucky Horse Park. All right. The couple approved my idea. I really didn't think it was going to sell. I thought this tackiest thing I ever saw. But they liked the idea. They said it will go because people like to buy souvenirs when they travel and the horse park is definitely going to draw a lot of people from all over the united states because it's brand new well we were going to split the profits which i can tell you this i wasn't going to get rich but that didn't matter it, it was a project i always liked projects and it was going to be a fun project, I thought. So, the couple took two gross to the Kentucky Horse Park and sold them. I sold a gross to the Kentucky Training Center in Lexington. Now, the Kentucky Training Center is where they auction off those $100,000 racehorses. I'd been there several times. I'd never seen them do an auction, but I'd seen the horses and where where the auction takes place. Very nice place. They bought a gross. <clears throat> then I took a gross of them down to the Cumberland Falls State Park gift shop. They took a gross. Okay. There's four gross of horse biscuits that I've just sold. I couldn't believe it. I got a call a little later from one of them. I think it was Cumberland Falls. They wanted another gross of my horse biscuit. So I was in business. 
Now, let's see where I'm going from here. Oh, it was almost Christmas. My brother belonged to the Lions Club, and every year before Christmas, the Lions Club had an auction. It was a, a syndicated TV auction where the local people could watch and, and bid. They would bid on all the items that had been donated for the auction. Of course, you know, Lions Club always supports uh, uh, buying glasses for uh, people and for children and, and anything that the children need. So this was what this auction was for. Okay, my brother came in the shop and I said, why don't you take one of my horse biscuits to the auction and see if, see if you can sell it, see what happens. So he did. Now what happens at the auction, they are limited to how much time they can spend uh, promoting one item. They can't, they have to, ha uh, because they've got so many items, they have to hurry through the auction. When they came to my horse biscuit, the camera zoomed in. The camera zoomed in on my horse biscuit, just like this, where the people could see it real good. It was sitting on the floor and they had the camera on it. The bid started and they kept going and they kept going. And I was amazed at how many people were bidding on that little old horse biscuit. They had to cut the time because they had to reserve time for other items. And I don't know how far that one item might have gone or how much it would have brought in at that auction, but it, it was fun to watch. Okay, I'm doing pretty well with that. I'm getting ready for Christmas with my crafts and everything. People are going to be making a lot of uh, Christmas gifts. It's eight o'clock at night. I'm sitting in my kitchen and watching Mork and Mindy. And someone knocks at my back door, really pounding on my back door. Well, my back door was... My house was on the corner, so my back door was near the sidewalk and the street. And everybody that came to my house would come to the back door instead of the front door because my shop was right behind the house. Well, when I answered the door, it was a man that I had gone to high school with him and I recognized him. He said, Pat, Smoke is pouring out of the window of the building behind your house. I looked and sure enough, black smoke was coming out. My shop was on fire. I had to call the fire department. Phone was right there in the kitchen. Now I'm trying to control myself and think straight. So I had a cabinet door, I pulled it open and it had a list of emergency telephone numbers. I take my finger and I'm going down that list looking for the fire department. I just couldn't focus and think. I went down that list again. I couldn't see fire department. I thought, I'll just pick up the phone and I'll just dial O and maybe an operator will answer. I did that and sure enough, the operator answered immediately. And I said, I have fire in progress at my house at the corner of 5th and Kentucky Street. Now, the fire department was about five blocks up the street from where I lived. I'm on the corner of Kentucky Street, Kentucky Street, and Main Street run parallel. So, it's very obvious where I lived. Anybody could have taken you there. And it was very close to the fire department. So when I said that, 
I have a fire in progress at the corner of 5th and Kentucky Street. The lady said, 5th and Kentucky Street. I said, surely to God you know where 5th and Kentucky Street is. And she said, ma'am, are you calling the Danville Fire Department? Heavens above, I didn't know that when I dialed the operator, it took me to the offices in Danville, Kentucky. And I said, Danville, hell, I want Corbin. She said, ma'am, stay on the line. I'll have the fire department right with you. Well, they were there within two or three minutes. They put out the fire, but the damage was too much. I lost everything in my shop. I couldn't afford financially to rebuild. So that meant I was out of business. I had to go find myself a job. And I decided at the same time, I didn't want to make any more horse biscuits. So I called a couple and I said, I won't be making any more horse biscuits for you. So that's my story. And if you ever are anywhere and you see one of these sitting on somebody's desk or table, you'll know I made it. This is the Kentucky Horse Park's souvenir of the year in 1978. So I've kept a few of them just to show people what I one of the one of the tricks of trade that I used to make. I hope you've enjoyed this story. I hope you get a kick out of it. Now, when it comes to that blender, I was telling some lady friends how I was making the horse biscuits, and they were, these were ladies that were, you know, the true ladies. They could hardly listen to my story about horse manure. And when I said I used my blender to make my horse biscuits, one of the ladies said, I'll never eat anything that comes out of your kitchen again. So, that's my story. And as one man said, you should have been on the Johnny Carson show. Folks, you have a good Thanksgiving. God bless you all. I hope your families are together because this is definitely the time of year for your family. And I'm planning on enjoying all of the people that'll be around my table and the food. We have some really good cooks. I'm going to be taking corn pudding, sweet potato, casserole, and dressing. That's what I've been requested to bring. So, we're going to have turkey and ham and a lot of good uh, desserts. My sister's bringing an apple cake. Jan's going to make a lot of deviled eggs, and I don't know what else. And my niece's two sons will be there. They're both in college now. And they're the most delightful young men you've ever met. When we see all of these horror stories on TV about what goes on in the colleges and on the streets with young people, let me tell you this. 
there are some good ones, very good ones. These two young men are right at the top of my list. One of them is a chef. He's not a professional chef yet, but his day is coming. He will be doing the turkey. The other brother, he sings and plays a guitar, and is he good? He will be entertaining us on Thanksgiving Day, and we are going to have a good time. And I hope the same for you, and God bless you all for this Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.